When Death Became Funny, Changing Views of Death in Western Society by Ian Bondurant. Modern media often refers to death as a joke, with popular movies such as Death at a Funeral or Weekend at Bernie's, both centering around deaths. Even popular animated comedies such as Family Guy has a recurring character of death. Or South Park that consistently kills off one of its main characters, Kenny. However, history has portrayed death as something to be afraid of. Religion, for example. Cultural practices surrounding death combined with ideas about what happens after death to form the basis of religion. Religion has established ideas such as hell or unfavorable judgment in the eyes of God. The arts also have a very, uh, prominent fear of religion, such as Vanita's paintings, paintings that are meant to remind humans of the fleetingness of life and the worthlessness of earthly pleasures in hopes of converting people to Calvinism. And even literature, such as Mark Twain's The Californian's Tale, where a man refuses to get over the death of his wife. Noticing these trends, I began to ask, when did death become funny? When did you transition from fear to comedy? I looked closer into the changing attitudes of death and discovered this book, Western Attitudes Towards Death from the Middle Ages to the Present, published in 1974 by Philippe Aries. It was the first book to propose death as a historical subject. Aries divided attitudes of death into four periods, tame death, one's own death, thy death, and forbidden death. In tame death, people were aware of their imminent death, they planned for their deaths, and they accepted their deaths. Aries cites specific examples from medieval literature as examples of this attitude. Sir Gawain, a knight of the round table in Arthurian legends, spent his last words, Know ye well, said Gawain, that I shall not live two days. This shows an awareness of his imminent death and an acceptance of it. King Ban, a king in Arthurian legend, had taken a bad fall. When he regained consciousness, he noticed the crimson blood running from his mouth, his nose, his ears. He looked up to heaven and uttered as best he could, Ah, Lord God, help me, for I see and I know that my end has come. Again, showing an awareness of his imminent death and an acceptance of it. Don Quixote made no attempt to flee from death into the daydreams in which he had passed his life. On the contrary, the warning signs of death brought him back to his senses. Niece, he said very calmly, I feel that death is near, again showing an acute awareness and acceptance of death. Another famous example is Sir Lancelot. Upon recognizing his imminent death, lay down on the ground and pointed his head east towards Jerusalem as per religious customs. This showed an acute awareness, not only of his imminent death and his acceptance of death, but his rituals for when death finally approached him. One's own death, beginning in the 11th or 12th century. The next phase was brought about by changing religious views. Death became more personal as Christian views changed. Originally, the Christian view were that every Christian was saved. As long as they were buried on church land, when Christ came for the second coming, he would raise you from the ground and then lead you to the promised land. However, around 13th century, the idea of judgment came into play. People's personal good deeds versus their personal bad deeds would be judged at the gates of heaven. This created a sense of individual biography. Individualized death brought about a fear of failed judgment. We see a, a fear of death begin to be established in the 13th century. This became more prominent around the 15th and 16th century as seen in poetry. 
The horror of physical death and of decomposition is a familiar theme in 15th and 16th poetry. O Carrion, who art no longer man, who will hence keep thee company? Whatever issues from thy liquors, worms engendered by the stench of thy vile carrion flesh. This leads to the next period of attitudes towards death. Thy death. The upwelling of individualism set about in the 12th century set the stage for this new attitude. Death became a way to escape their individual but everyday and monotonous lives, almost a break of sorts. People started becoming more and more selfish and aware of their individualism. By the 19th century, this individualistic feeling had evolved into a new fear of death, the fear of loss. Mourning became excessive, and the feeling of personal loss lingered long after death. This led into the last and modern period of attitudes towards death, forbidden death. By the mid-19th century, people began to hide the idea of death from their dying loved ones. This was an attempt to keep the sick person away from the burden of their own ordeal. This was done because of a projected fear of loss onto their dying loved ones. By the mid-20th century, this feeling had evolved due to the displacement of sight of death. Rather than dying in their homes or their churches as traditional, they were now dying in hospitals, places focused on present, preventing deaths. This quickly evolved the attitude into a denial of death altogether. So through a thorough reading of Western attitudes towards death, Death began to show signs of fear around the 13th century, during one's own death period, when people began to fear Christ's judgment of them and their deeds. Fear multiplied during the thy death period with a newfound fear of loss. So then I needed to determine when death became funny. Societal acceptance of dark jokes and satire became apparent with the coinage of the term black humor. The term was, the term was coined by Andre Breton in 1935 in his book Anthology of Black Humor. Black humor is defined as humor marked by the use of usually morbid, ironic, grotesquely comic episodes, such as death. In Anthology of Black Humor, Breton accredits Jonathan Swift as the creator of black humor. Here are some quotes from Jonathan Swift. It is impossible that anything so natural, so necessary, and so universal as death should ever have been designed by providence as an evil to mankind. He was a bold man that first ate an oyster. As far as Breton was concerned, when it comes to black humor, everything designates Swift as the true originator. This seems self-evident to us now because we know what black humor is. What Lazard means by this is because Breton invented the term black humor, he basically gets to decide what black humor is. Breton included three works of Jonathan Swift in his anthology to black humor, including Directions to Servants in 1731, A Modest Proposal in 1729, and a meditation upon a broomstick in 1710. Jonathan Swift was only alive during the 18th century, and he only wrote books during the 18th century. But there are only two authors included in Breton's anthology from the 18th century. Breton also includes one author from between the 18th and 19th century and then Breton includes 15 authors from the 19th century in his book, including Nietzsche and Lewis Carroll. This puts the rise of black comedy predominantly in the 19th century. That's 500 years or five centuries after death first started to become scary. And around the same time, people truly started to fear loss.
So society feared that they didn't live well enough to get into heaven. Society feared that they would never see their loved ones again. Society looked at death and felt helpless. And helplessness makes for great comedy. An article on psychologytoday.com states, it is possible that when we are overwhelmed by tragic events, when we reach deep misery and our suffering is so dire we feel completely helpless, unable to change the realities surrounding us. In these situations, humor is a useful tool, is a defense mechanism. We are so overpowered by pain, unable to contain it or process it at the present time that we seek relief. The same article refers to how Jewish people often poked fun at themselves and their situation during the Holocaust. Jews did not have control of the physical reality around them, so instead of feeling helpless about it, they tried changing their internal feelings. Humor played a big role in that change and gave them a break from the horrifying reality around them. In conclusion, death became funny when society began to view death as helpless. Society created and embraced black humor to change their feelings about their fear and an inevitability surrounding death. and giving everyone a new genre of laughter.